everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Western Showdown, the largest international women's curling event in Canada this season. We're so glad you've decided to join us to see some of the top female curlers in the world participate in this event. My name is Jim Grundy. I'm the branch director of RBC Dominion Securities here in Swift Current. Our branch is not only a huge fan and support of curling in our community, we're so proud to be supporting the Western Showdown for its inaugural year. RBC is committed to working with our community partners to promote and celebrate vibrancy in sport and the communities in which we live. Thank you to everyone from the Western Showdown team for putting together this amazing event. On behalf of RBC, enjoy the tournament. We're for agriculture, for growers, doers, whatever it takers. We're for doing things with purpose. We're for the little guy with big guy dreams. We're for agriculture. We're for you. Nutrien Ag Solutions, leading the field. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Okay, welcome everyone here. Friday evening here on the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. My name is Matt Sussman. I'm jo joined here by uh, Sean Joyce. Sean, good to see you. Well, good to hear you. I can't see you from where I am, but. Uh... We can see everything we need to see. We've got the curlers on screen. We sure do. I guess I have a better camera than you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are here joining us in the uh, this B event matchup between uh, Team Sylvana Tiranzoni from Switzerland and Team Amber Holland. Um, both teams coming off a loss, then a win. Uh, both teams will stay alive if they lose this game rather than lose early game as continue to play. But um, Sean, what are you expecting from uh, both of these games as we see them start the first end? Well, we've seen some strong play for those who've been with us uh, for much of the action so far over the opening two days. And as teams get a little bit more time on the ice, get a little bit more familiar with how each of these sheets run and how the rocks curl, I expect we'll see a little bit more aggressive play and uh, expect that strong play to continue. Looks like we've got an open end here coming in the first. Yeah, you're right. Uh, that'll give us some time to introduce all of the teams here. They got underway rather quickly. I'm still trying to figure out who's got last rock here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks like if I, judging by the scoreboard, looks like Team Terranzoni is going uh, the yellow rocks. We'll have hammer. Um, so we will start with them. So this should not be a team that is unfamiliar to those who have watched curling over the last several years, but it is a slightly different lineup for them. So we have uh, Alina Petz throwing the fourth stones, uh, Savannah Tiranzoni throwing the third stones and skipping, Carol Hovold throwing second stones, and uh, Briar Herleman throwing lead. That is a new front end for them their front end retired last year. Um, as we mentioned, they are uh, the team from Switzerland, the, the reigning Swiss champions, and I believe they're ranked fifth in the world. They do have Last Rock here in the opening end, throwing the Yellowstones. 
because they're already on third stones. So this one may go quickly, assuming all the shots are made. And overthrowing the red stones, the local team, if you will. Although officially from Regina, uh, Team Holland. That's Amber Holland throwing skip stones. Kim Schneider throwing third. Carly Korczynski throwing second. And Debbie Lazinski at lead. One rock and play has traversed to the back of the house, but the calls are all the same. 28 teams started play here in Swift Current uh, Thursday morning, looking to be one of the eight teams still around for the championship round on Sunday. We had one A qualifier determined this afternoon. We've got another one on the ice tonight as well. This uh, a B event game, the winner of this game moves on to play in a B semi at uh, 12.30 tomorrow afternoon against Rafaela Kaiser, who uh, lost that A qualifier this afternoon to Clancy Grandy on last shot. It was a great game. Yeah, and, and this being the triple knockout format, I think this is a very fun type of event to follow. I think all the, the teams end up playing the teams are supposed to, rather than a pool play where you're sometimes matched up uh, against a team that might be of a different quality than you, yourself. Yeah, I was doing a game uh, earlier yesterday with Jerry Gertz, and that's one of the things we were talking about. It. The players a lot of times prefer these triple knockouts because you know your your fate's in your own hands, whereas in those small pool round robins, sometimes as you get close to the end of it, you might already be out of it, or at the very least, you need help from somebody else. Here, you know, if you're still playing, you got a chance. Absolutely. And so I think, yeah, I think it's fun for everybody. You may not know your schedule, but at least you know what you got to do. Just keep winning. The one little miscue here in this opening end from the Holland team has opened up the opportunity for Kieran Zoni to perhaps get a deuce. Amber's going to need a good hit and roll here to perhaps set up a double on her last one. First skip stone is underway. Just cleaning, not even touching it. And that will just be a nose hit, but it is shot stone, so they have to deal with it. Probably would have liked to roll over at least a little bit, but uh, it does make it go away. The question will be how hard do you want to play for the double on your last one in the first end? If it's paper thin, you don't want to risk missing it altogether. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's a matter of uh, risk management, especially here in the first end, but you know, it's just two points. Pets throwing her first. She would love a nose hit. Always interesting to me when we see a, a situation like this in the first end to take notice of the fact that the two teams playing a, a hit in the exact same area chose different turns. Yeah, that's right. And Amber again playing from the outside in. This to me suggests she's just playing the hit and roll to get over towards that rock somewhere you could get right on top of it if you hit it perfectly but i think if she was playing the double you'd see her come from the other side yeah you're right because of the rotation and the, and the roll and the deepness of the roll so i think this is just yeah making the shot as hard as possible so the last stone is out of hand Just a clean from the brushers, nothing else yet. Backing off at the end, she hits and actually rolls a little to the outside. Tiran's only still sitting one. Opportunity to draw, just needs full 12 foot to pick up her deuce. It's just amazing how many times I watch a first end and I think, oh, we're just going to be trading hits, and then it seems 
almost 70% of the time, if not more, there's a miss and then it's a sh and it's a sh uh, easy shot for two. Yeah, and of course it came out of nowhere. We were talking about the draw as it happened, so. Final rock is out. First end. Just needs full 12 touching the eight. Sweepers are not particularly urgent on this. Just guiding it in. That will be a count of two for Team Terenzoni. After the first end, they'll take a 2 0 lead with Holland Hope to having Hammer in the second. or the logo. Our events are always painted houses, but in the future coming out, I'm pretty sure we're going to be going to all logo houses. Uh, they're a great revenue source for any curling club. You can get your advertisements on there. And usually after the first year, the houses are paid for. It's all free money for you. So hopefully check, it, check Jet Ice out for your future in-house logo. Back here in the second end, RBC Main Securities Western Showdown in Swift Current. So Team Terenzoni taking a 2 0 lead after one singular missed shot by Team Holland, and sometimes that's all it is that you need. So Terenzoni going in the house, and Team Holland, as expected, going to Throw up a corner guard. Deblazinski playing lead for Amber Holland. The intern corner guard attempt and they have not touched it, backed away at the hog line, and everybody's praying it's going to stop. It does come to rest just outside the rings. In my experience, hoping that it stops is really not that effective, but it seemed to work there. <laughs> it's not what Chelsea can do, though. So there are a total of six games tonight. In this Friday evening draw, let you know some of the score updates, although they are available on Curling Stadium. Just a number of teams from really all over the world. We've got teams from South Korea, Sweden, obviously Switzerland in this one, Japan, and Italy. One in each, which is a really, really fun thing to see. It must be really a rare thing and a nice thing to see for all the fans there. Yeah, out of the 2018 field, there were 13 international teams here when play began. I have to admit, I was on the air this afternoon. There, there were four elimination games this afternoon, so there are four teams eliminated. And I uh, haven't had a chance to look yet to see who, who those were. That's a nice double and roll there. Almost got underneath, but the situation looking a lot better for Team Holland. Actually, the one still moving enough, enough to get sit out. shot, but yes, they are sitting around. Karen's only looking at making a play on the guards, and somebody down at the other end counted to five and said, We can't. Five rock free guard zone is in play here. Keep changing the number of stones in the guard zone. Eventually, someone's going to lose count. 
it's good to know someone's thinking about us. So they'll just hit the open stone and sit there. Now we're sitting oh, too. That was a nice shot, and it, it, it made it look easier than it really was, too. She could only see just all of that rock. You hit it a hair thinner, and you jam it onto your own stone at the back of the 12 foot, probably still buried as well. one all the way down she'll make the hit across the top of the back one shooter rolls to sit on the corner of the eight foot for shot rock yeah that comes up a millimeter and both of them might be gone but nonetheless does the job i don't, don't know if they really cared if they got the second one out because if you draw around that corner later on having that rock behind it it won't hurt you at all the interesting thing here will be to see whether or not they, after this hit is made, do they play this stone or they just straight draw around that corner? Well, with this big roll, I think that'll make it a little bit easier to decide. Here and yeah, comes the draw. Yeah, and to your point, with those two yellows in the back, that's going to help them immensely. Yeah, they got a tight guard. You got a pocket protecting you from behind, uh, from the back, if you can. Uh, get even half around here would be very tough to remove it. I know this Amber Holland team a little bit uh, and they have had a a few chances to play this year, but this is actually the first time they've had their full lineup together. Carly, and and in the program and on the uh, website, it still says Korczynski, but uh, she just got married a few weeks ago, and it is now Carly Kendall. So they had all kinds of subs through the early part of the season. At least you had a good excuse, right? <laughs> well, that depends. <laughs> you knew you were a curler. Uh, how did you manage to schedule a, a wedding that late? Oh, that's right. And you're going to miss every anniversary, too. I actually I think the event that she missed wasn't her own wedding, but it was a wedding party that I think she was involved in. And again, it was another curler, so same lack of excuses. <laughs> I suppose you can then go to Bond's Fields for your anniversary. There's maybe she's thinking long term on this, which is typically what you do for marriage. Anyways, looking to come around there, they didn't get the line they were looking for. It sits shot rock top of the eight foot, but it is wide open with room to roll under. The only question is, that's what you can see Amber looking at. Can you roll under to be shot rock? You need to have a little bite of the eight foot. Where you make contact, you're not going to be in the eight foot at all. It depends on how shallow you can roll here. Yeah, I think there's a possibility, but you certainly have to come close to that guard. Kim Schneider. Reunited uh, at third with uh, Amber Holland uh, a couple years ago. Attempt to push it over and roll. But I can't tell if that rolled enough. It's and it's close. close enough that Sylvana's going to have to look twice. I think she pointed at the red one. that they're looking at the run at all suggests to me that it, it must be red. I'm not sure how you play that run. Yeah, 
Yeah, you could, but I don't think it's a little risky. It doesn't leave you a lot uh, of options. Looks like they're going to just attempt to draw around. She had nice weight on her first one, just didn't get the curl. See if she can make the adjustment on the line here. Sweepers have jumped this one early. This one's definitely curling. Well, if we were wondering who was shot now before, there'll be no doubt now. Absolutely. So not only does it push it into the eight foot for sure for second shot, but it's completely under cover. Yeah, we're all a little greedy. Yeah, Wants to roll under cover again. The only risk in this shot is that she's got to come into her own stone to make this, and uh, she doesn't have very far to nudge it before it's not second shot anymore. Did you ever roll away on this shot? You, you could. You could. If you roll away a little bit and stay as shot rock, turns out he's going to have to make a play on it. They went to with plan B at the end. They didn't want to stay right there and leave a double. They didn't roll very far. And they don't need to move the second rock very far, so I think they're going to make a play at it. Now, given it's only the second end of a Friday evening game or the B event, but if you needed one person to make a really, really good shot, the person who's about to throw it, high on your list. Lena Petzis. When she joined forces with uh, Silvana, he became a force on the world scene, winning world championships, going to the Olympics. It's a lot of fearless shots out of her throughout the years. A chance here for a possibly a double depending on where she gets this again doesn't really need to get the second rock all the way out she needs to move it five or six inches sideways she'll be sitting two here pressures were on early it's tight ice because she has to be very full on the first one Nudges it over wow. far enough to get it out of the rings. She didn't have to get rid of it, but she did. So, Tiranzoni now laying three. Shot rock is about half open. Amber's best chance here for the double, though, is probably the run back. It, or, pardon me, to get a deuce. She makes the run back, she might leave it in behind the two guards. Run back. See if they can to curl a little bit, and they will make contact with a couple stones. Everything scatters, and two yellows are gone. And uh, amber stone is shot, but it's sitting right in the middle. Yeah, I needed to curl just a hair more. Wanted to uh, catch just a bit on the other side of that yellow stone when she drove it back. I wasn't really looking for the double. Wanted to stay in behind cover. Does mean she'll have an open shot for her last one. But she'll be forced to try to score a single. Here's 
Tiranzoni's last stone. Just looking for an open hit. Looking for the roll as well. And rolls, but not under cover. Yeah, I'm not sure I would have wanted that roll. Nose hit, uh, you're probably forcing right now. Amber's got a chance to play for the blank if she wants to take it on, and that's what they're talking about. It's not a gimme, but if you make the double, you're probably getting the blank. With that ice, I have to think she's playing this quieter, so this is probably just the hit for one. I would, I would guess so. You'd, you'd hate to be down 3 nothing on you. Unless you were really confident. The angle's not bad, but there is quite a bit of distance between those two rocks, for sure. If they were closer together, you might take a run at it. So Amber's just playing quiet weight on this, looking for a hit and stick for one. Sweeper's just cleaning down the path. And that will be hit for one. So Team Holland's forced. But they are on the board. Tiranzoni will take the lead and the hammer. Two to one going into the third end. There's a few of them. There's roughly 20 logos per sheet to be put in for the mixed doubles, along with a couple of extra little dots. But all our logos come from Jet Ice. They are the best logos to put in. We use them around the world, and they're very easy to install. As you can tell, this is the center ice logo that's going to be going in for the world. This is about a four footer by 10. It's going to look like a million dollars. Their colors on their logos are always nice and vibrant. And, like I said before, very easy to put in. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. And we're here now in the third end, the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown. Team Terranzoni with the lead and the hammer up two to one over Team Holland. As center guard goes up, as well as a come around, we are seeing that more rather than keeping it open, going right to the center, Sean. Um, What's the thought process behind just drawing around? Well, I think for a lot of these teams uh, at this level, you see them start thinking about odd end versus even end very early in the game. And here, this being an odd end, turns only with last rock and the lead already would like to keep the blank alive here. Uh, whereas in the even ends, you might see them throw the corner guard even with the one point lead. I think here. They're looking to choke off that center guard, and as soon as they're able to, they'll start playing peels on those center guards. They want to they want to keep a blank as an option here. Okay. 
Uh, freeze it looks like a freeze attempt comes up a little bit light, so now there's another guard in play and three guard zone being still active. They're just gonna go around all of that. Drop another one. Yeah. Two guards for the Holland team, which is you know great when you're trying to steal, but they're in a position where on the next stone fairly routine double peel. Herleman with another nice come around, sits that on the corner of the forefoot, maybe just a little bit deep. She's on the tee line. Probably room for Carly Kendall to try to come down and sit on the inside corner of that. Yeah, we mentioned earlier, Team Tiranzoni is playing with a slightly new lineup. Um, not everybody is unfamiliar to them, however, and they have all uh, everyone on this team has accomplished a lot. Uh, their second, Carol Hovold, was the alternate for this team for many years, and uh, to her name does have five world championships as an alternate, but this is her first time on the Tiranzoni team as a, as a full member of the front end. So with their old front end, uh, both lead and second retiring, this is still a team, they, they just, I'm switching them, they just keep finding really good players and, and holding them up and they're always a force. Sixth stone of the end now so they can play the peels and as we said with those two guards sitting so close together it was a fairly routine double peel. Silvana Tiran's only wanting to keep the blank alive, she's now got all the play in the house. Yeah, chance here for Team Holland to sit second and third, possibly make a double difficult. This would be a hit and roll out, so half miss there. We are looking like a blank more and more. Well, we were looking like a blank in the first end. It ended up being a score of two. So <laughs> we can't be too certain yet, I, but it, it's certainly shaping up to be the type of end that uh, Sylvana Tiran's only wanted to play. Yeah, the, the only way it ever looks like a blank for me is when they hang a blank. <laughs> Well, only will take a deuce like she got in the first end any time somebody wants to give it to her, but by playing the end this way, she has kept the opportunity to perhaps get a blank alive. She's never going to say no to two. about what happened in that first end and there's the same thing oh, here in the third I'm just I'm just never gonna say it's looking like a blank and this will never happen again <laughs> well, you could just kind of sense it the way they jumped the sweep out of her hand here to try to draw to the wing, separate these as much as possible. I did see uh, Amber talking to Carly after that shot. Now, we don't have mics on the players. Can't hear what they're saying. 
and and I'm trying to think back to remember which stone it was that they missed with in the first end. But it does make you wonder if they're questioning, uh, perhaps they've got a cutter. I think it was around that time. That's very possible. The draw is made, but it is a little bit raised up. There is a chance for a hit and roll here, possibly a double. Get out of this. At the very least, you want to group the stones here and have a shot at perhaps an easier double later on for Amber. She does nice hit roll, roll there. Rolls just far enough that uh, Terenzoni can't try to roll back to the open side. She'd have to put it onto her own stone that way. So she is going to have to stay on the same side of the sheet as, as the rock sitting on the edge of the button. May leave a double. So I'll, I'll downgrade this to, it's probably not going to be a blank, but it might be. <laughs> I don't even know if I give you probably yet. It really depends on how well she can make this roll. It is going to be tough to not leave a double on this shot. Roman's going hard on this to keep the line and roll it over. She just... Josh squirts the red out, but they still actually made contact with the yellow on the way by. Didn't move it very far though. Yeah, yeah, that's that was a that was a quiet hit to, to roll as far as they wanted to. So chance here for Amber. This will be her chance to try and make the double. Extension at the end. Deb Lazinski on the brush cleaning. Now they're going from the other side, so they must be looking for some curl here. Needs to come up. She'll make contact, but just jams it onto the second stone. Yeah, so back to the open draw. Love this to land on the T line. We might be seeing just a little bit of a difference from the two sides as to how much curler is. You saw the uh, the miss by Kim Schneider and then Sylvana Terenzoni looking for the roll. Both of those stones over curled, but they were playing out turns. Amber Holland playing the in turn didn't curl up to that stone. So you might be seeing just a little bit more curl on the out turn going in this direction. This is not uncommon. Common right out of hand. Here comes Tiranzoni to help. Well, you know you've got rings, you don't want to leave an angle for a double. Yeah, they got it on, but it is pretty steep. Just going to opt for the hit and roll in behind that stone. And interesting here that she's changing turns. last, looking for the hit and roll. This one looks like it needs to curl as well. Oh, make the hit, it's a little roll, but yeah. still open. 
Arena Pets is just going to have an open hit for two. Just needs to hit and stay in the house somewhere. He will not have a blank, just like I thought. <laughs> Don't rewind the tape at all. Scrolling this down, and the shot is made, and that will be two more yellow rocks in. That will count. Team Terenzoni jumping up to a 4-1 to one lead after three. We're for agriculture. For growers, doers, whatever it takers. We're for doing things with purpose. We are for the little guy with big guy dreams. We are for agriculture. We are for you. Nutrien Ag Solutions, leading the field. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Fourth end, the RBC Minions Securities Western Showdown here on Curling Stadium. Again, my name is Matt Sussman, and Sean Joyce is along for the ride. As we, as we've been noticing, Sean, Darren Zoni has been really controlling the, um, the the ends they've had hammered. They've had open ends and just been capitalizing on a couple misses. Yeah, she really hasn't had to try to, to be aggressive to score her deuces yet. Has had two of them come out of nowhere. You don't count on that, but you certainly uh, appreciate it when it happens. You haven't had to really put anything on the line yet. You've got a 4-1 to one lead here as we play in the fourth. Yeah, three rocks. I mean, obviously it's early. It's still just the fourth end, but... Uh, Team Holland having Hammer now, looking to try to put a couple points out back on the board themselves. So they throw a corner guard up. First stone of the end did come a little deep. It's that stone you see at the back of the forefoot. They get that one to the top eight. It's just the fourth end. If this was a little bit later in the game, you might see the second corner guard. Or had that one slid, slid deep as well, you, you also might have seen the second corner card. So call Nothing here. Another the brushers. So make a play on the stones in the house. And they'll just nose it. We're looking to hit and roll towards the corner, and that would have cleared that back stone, but jams it. Still behind the T-line, but it does have a good piece of the button now. Just catches a piece of that stone, enough to get it out. Who's it, the shooter? Yeah, had to sweep to make a curl just to just to clear it. And that will give Amber an opportunity here. I think she's going to call for the 
come around on the bin. Yeah, they called the come around. Prepared to ignore that stone at the back of the button for now. Try to get your deuce set up here. Pictures are staying close. That usually means they're just waiting on a line call and you can see there a lot of room by the guard. Nice weight, but that's going to stay completely in the open. Well, Team Holland looks like they've been struggling a little bit trying to find that line on some of their draws. Weight hasn't totally been an issue. made it rolls behind the tee and it is away from the corner guard Amber Holland looking for the corner freeze on shot rock now and if you put this on the corner that stone that just rolled over will be in the way if you're gonna try to blast it out Picking this one up a little earlier. And this one he is curling too. Doesn't even reach the house. Now that time I think they did have the line, probably just barely, but yeah, six feet light. Where you wanted to leave it, center guard on on shot stone. Looking really quickly at all the other games on this draw, all the other games are B event matchups, with the exception of uh, Team Beth Peterson and Team Gim from South Korea. The winner of that will win the A qualifier. All other games, pretty close. Terzoni will draw that one right to the button, almost to the face of Shot Stone. And so now they are laying three, two of them under cover, and Amber looks like she's considering the run back. I think it's all she's got. Those two stones so close together, hard to get them both out too, but you'd at least like to get one of them out and, and uh, pop the other one off the button somehow. The other problem is, in order to even be close to this, you're still going to have to leave a guard near the center line. Not going to roll very far off if you're making the run back. It's still backing up. Might have been just a little in out on the release there and straightened that one right out. So trouble of brewing here. It's Arizona. Three point lead, and they've got three more in the house. They've got the scoring area completely covered. And you should expect a guard here. Yeah, that's the call. I'm still going back to the, to the shot last in and, and the one in the first, but I can't remember which stone it was. And I'm wondering did Kim perhaps overcompensate there? Does she think she's got a stone that curls a little bit more? It definitely looked positive on the release. It's early in the season. Is she questioning in her own mind, did I throw those two okay, or do I have a stone that curls? And 
may have just altered her release a little bit. You know, it really is a question a lot of people do ask, you know, is it the stone? How often, in your opinion, Sean, is it the stone? <laughs> That's a loaded question. It can depend on the facility you're in and the rocks that you're using. The rocks here at Swift Current, I think, are pretty good. But, you know, the other part of that is early in the season, you don't all, you're not always in, let's put it this way, you're not always in mid-season form. So your releases aren't always necessarily as crisp as they should be. And, and that's where it can cause you a problem because it, it, it creeps into your head, well, did I throw it bad or is it the rock? And you just don't know. And uh, if you think it could have been you, you might see her overcompensate. And Now, if it was the rock, you, you really don't get a good read if you keep changing your, your release. Not going to be able to play the run back here, so she's going to look for quieter weight, try to come down, sit on the face, and tap the back one a little bit. This is a much more delicate shot. Yeah, with the guard being extremely high, she has this opportunity. And of course, we don't have player mics, so we don't even know for sure if they're wondering about the rocks. And I honestly can't remember if it was the same shot in the first, if it was the same rock in the first end that it was in the third so I'm just speculating because I did see a conversation after it was missed and it's usually the kind of conversation that that happens when you say well is, is that rock just curling more mm -hmm. nice shot there she makes the tap back leaves her shooter angled yeah I don't think that red rock's leaving anytime soon it is second no. shot but it's in a wonderful spot well, if you just straight up guard it, uh, Amber's got a shot to pick out shot rock. Granted, it would only leave you sitting one, but a moment ago, it didn't look great for even scoring here. Well, given that, it looks like Terenzone is going to have Alina just freeze on this. Yeah, she's going to have to come right down onto it. Hard to throw a straight guard here anywhere and and not leave Amber something. You could, you could maybe just be full 8 foot, which essentially would still act like a guard. and backed away from this one a little bit. Now looking for some curl, has to get close to the nose. Gonna just rub off of it and that might have left a chance for Amber Holland to perhaps make a double and sit two. The other option, could you ever just hit and roll in front of it? Would you still have a shot for your last one? Yeah, there's, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a rough miss for the pets, is that way too heavy, bumped everything into the open. There might be a chance here. Well, bumping the red one into the open doesn't hurt the pets. It'll give her a chance to at least eliminate a red one on her last one. What Amber's wondering is, can she get, with about the same weight that Alina just threw, can she get to shot stone, nudge it back and sit two? have to think if they're looking at that they would look at playing the same turn that Alina just threw. There is a chance you could just rub off of the third shot stone and still make it but you can't hit that third shot one very thick or you're not going to uh, push the shot stone back. Could be an opportunity here for the Holland team. They've had a couple of uh, bad breaks and then one and three and gave away fairly simple deuces. She can make a nice little tap back here. You'd think she must have an opportunity to get two or, of her own. That could sure swing some momentum back for them. 
see what happens here for the first stone. Going down the sheet here. Shoes are staying with it, so they must like the weight. This has got a lot of room by the guard. They'll make contact with the third shot stone. It sits on top of the shot rock, but Yeah, so, so like Alina Pat's looking at rolling in. I think Matt, wouldn't you just look at hitting and rolling out on this? Anywhere you stay there is gonna leave her a double for two. Yeah, you're right. I think uh the shot she's got left right now, if if you just roll out, is very tough. It's the same shot you just played and it didn't curl enough. Yeah, and you also want to be careful you don't want to hit this too thin either. Yeah, you hit it thin, you could consider conceivably pop the shot rock out a little bit on your own. Zoni's last rock. Put the red in a good spot. Just squeeze it by, roll out. And we're still shot stone. Let's see what Amber has here. She's got all she's got is the same attempt she was making on the last one. Now they did have a lot of room by the guard, so she has tightened up the ice here. Chance here to throw maybe back house weight. Yeah, the weight on the last one was fine. It's just a question of, of finding the line. That's been the question for most of this game so far. Here comes Hammer. Trying to read lips. I think Carly's saying it's got a little bit more weight. Tighter by the guard, but if she's got more weight, it's going to have to curl a little bit yet. Makes the bump, catches the second one, and does move it far enough to pick up her deuce. Great shot by Amber Holland to close out the fourth. Wonderful shot. So, four to three, Tiranzoni at the break. Welcome to the 2022 Western Showdown, the largest international women's curling event in Canada this season. We're so glad you've decided to join us to see some of the top female curlers in the world participate in this event. My name is Jim Grundy. I'm the branch director of RBC Dominion Securities here in Swift Current. Our branch is not only a huge fan and support of curling in our community, we're so proud to be supporting the Western Showdown for its inaugural year. RBC is committed to working with our community partners to promote and celebrate vibrancy in sport in the communities in which we live. Thank you to everyone from the Western Showdown team for putting together this amazing event. On behalf of RBC, enjoy the tournament. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Here in the fifth end of this Friday evening matchup in the B side 
the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown in Swift Current Saskatchewan. So, Sean, Amber Holland made a really nice shot for two. It was the first real chance she had of scoring any points in this game. Yeah, and after giving up uh, two, two deuces and one and three on, on really what can only be described as miscues, misfires, uh, that was a big shot to maybe get some momentum back. Yes, they still trail by one, but they were full credit for that deuce, made the, a great shot to get it. And they really needed something like that to, to get some of that momentum back. They had to be feeling a little down the way those two deuces happened. Yeah, that was a that was a classic skips deuce that can always turn the momentum around. But to his own his team, they, they've been rather sharp. Please attempt just rolls a little bit too far. It goes a little too far, rather. Once again, all the action in this game is sort of going under center, back to what you said earlier, having Hammer the odd end, wanting to keep a blank option open. Yeah, nothing has changed for Tiranzoni here. She's always had the hammer in the odd ends, and she's not real interested in pushing the play in the odd ends. We've got two in the forefoot. Remember how I'm looking to make a play on maybe one of those. Just wants to move it back. I don't think the call is to try to kill anything here. have the weight to kill something anyway. And she will touch every rock in the house and nothing leaves. <laughs> oh, it's sitting two, however. Yeah, I don't it's think that was Five rocks in the house and now it's time to peel the guard. Love to clip that, uh, what is second shot on the edge of the eight foot on the way by. So you can see Savannah lining it up, but it's not critical to get that one. You just want to get the guard out of the way for now. And then the nice thing for Tiranzoni is yes, Amber Holland might end up sitting two after this. Not if you can make that. Oh. But even had she been sitting two, neither rock was really in a guardable position. So now Amber's got to look at damage control. The front end for Team Terranzoni, the new front end. Picking them up nicely. Cleaning up some damage here. Again, everything in the house. Sweeping for some curl here. Makes contact just barely and enough to get it out the back, though. Yeah, it seems like we're just seeing a lot of overthrows, Sean. What do you think? I, You know, I'm, I'm watching her throw, and I, I don't even know for sure if those are overthrows. I think Carly looks like, uh, in particular, on that intern wide. She did it a couple times in the third end as well. Got away with it. But she looks like she's got just a little bit of a, a lateral drift in her delivery. She's going a little bit towards her left, which just brings that rock with her and, and straightens it out on the end turn. That one just hangs on enough to... 
Well, and that's the other that's the other thing. That's uh, I talked about that a little bit in the third. You saw the outturns are the ones that were curling there, and uh, that's another over curl on an outturn hit. Now here, Kim Schneider. I don't want to jinx her, but this is the same spot with the same turn. <laughs> Watch from the sweepers on this. She does get a piece of it and everything is spilled out. Sylvana Tiranzoni knows that spot has been a little bit of a problem for the Holland team so far, so she's going to look to draw right back into that same area. panic by the sweepers but it looks like it'll go in without a problem She curls across the face, does uh, manage to hold the shooter though. Again, nice wide open end for Team Terrazzoni, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Haven't talked about it yet, probably worth pointing out. Uh, no time clocks in play here, these are eight end games. Sometimes the viewers at home uh, get, uh, first of all, used to the fact that there's time clocks in so many of the te televised events. And then when you see open ends like this, you always think teams are trying to, to bank time. That's not an issue here. This is all about end management. I'm of a past generation of players myself, so we thought about it in, uh, you know, in an eight-end game, it might have been six, seven, and eight, you were worried about it. These top teams in the world right now, they're thinking about it from the first end. They want, they want that last rock in the even ends if they can manipulate it to work that way. Yeah, you think back to that shot by uh, Tiran's only seconds, that, that peel, it also took away another red rock on the side, opened the whole thing up for this. Seconds don't always get a lot of love. But. It's always that one shot. This might be the first one I, the first one that I can remember anyway, playing on this side of the sheet that uh, somebody's going at it from the inside out. Could be just Tiranzoni testing the waters, do you think? It could be, but we did see, and granted it was the other side of the sheet, but we saw Alina Pets do this in the first end as well, so it, it might be the player's preference as much as anything else. Some players like inside out, some like outside in. All the same shots made. And was Amber's last. On the brush most of the way down. 
takes the hit, does stay for Shot Rock, edge of the forefoot. We have our first no fooling blank attempt of this game. will just get out of play and Team Terrazzoni will get their blank. They will hold on to the hammer as they go into the sixth for four to three advantage. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we are everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares. Always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. We've just got our shipment of logos here in for our next event, which is going to be the mixed double. As you can see, there's a few of them. There's roughly 20 logos per sheet to be put in for the mixed doubles, along with a couple of extra little dots. But all our logos come from Jet Ice. They are the best logos to put in. We use them around the world, and they're very easy to install. As you can tell, this is the center ice logo that's gonna be going in for the world. This is about a four footer by 10. It's gonna look like a million dollars. Their colors on their logos are always nice and vibrant. And like I said before, very easy to put in. back in the sixth end of the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown in Swift Current Saskatchewan and Matt Sussman alongside Sean Joyce a blank in the fifth has allowed Team Terenzoni who has been in control of this game to get that all-important hammer in the sixth so Sean you gotta assume that with having two hammers left in this game for sure, they're given some flexibility in this end. They are, and I think the discussion here is whether they want to play straight corner guard or if they're playing the tick, and with that ice, I think she's opted for the tick. They're playing it while they can, right? Before they go to world championship, perhaps. Just slides by it. Does have enough weight to get out the back, though. It's the one problem with where that first guard was put. It's about halfway. It's it's tough to throw a second center guard now and, and get any separation. So looking to come into the rings. You might have liked to have had that guard either tighter or higher, but if you're tighter and they play the tick and push it into the rings, they can hit it on the next one. They let that guard stop halfway, just assuming they were going to make some kind of tick. Yeah, you can, you can assume in certain games that the tick will be made, but obviously... No such thing as a, as a gimme shot in this sport. So, guard is up, and, a, and a rock's in the house, so. Terry's over here looking to possibly play another tick. Calling the tick now, if it, if it went by with the same line, you can actually make a play on the shot in the house. Looks like she's got a little less weight this time gets by so she will clip the one in the rings yeah, 
Cameron Holland trailing here in the uh, sixth end, is looking to force the play a little bit. Yeah, obviously when you're when you're down one, three ends to go, the percentages are not in your favor. For zones analytics, you can always look at the odds based on the the season's history of all of the events. What the likelihood is of winning, if you look at being down one in the sixth without hammer, chances are low, so you have to try to steal. Because this one's going to come up a little bit light and maybe be in the house, but it's certainly third shot. Well, it's also the fifth rock of the end, so now the peels can start. She's got a couple of ways she can get rid of two reds here. She's going to angle it towards the one shot rock. She gets a little thick on the first one. She probably makes the double on the one that was just thrown. Love to make two red ones go away here. Just drives it over the top. Well, that stone was just thrown. If it sits there for the rest of the end, it can be used as a center guard. So I expect we'll see Amber Continue to throw guards on that one. Try to line them dead up so that uh, Tirzoni can't make the double peel on the two on the center line. to make this guards it becomes a bit of a game of cat and mouse uh Terenzoni at some point in time will change gears and try to score two on you center guards made turns only looking to size up a double. potential double here Double the roll for a corner. This gets the straight peel. Yeah, nothing wrong with making the simple shots. You know they they have the advantage in a number of ways. You just have to wonder about the timing here, and that's. Uh, Amber hesitated here. I think you got to throw one more guard anyway. I think you will expect Tiranzoni to peel it one more time, but when you get down to third's last stone, would she peel it again, or would she play the hit and roll and sit two? And you can always turn around and ask the other team, but I, I wouldn't trust them to tell you the truth. <laughs> if I throw one more guard, what are you going to do? teams knew each other, they would probably know that tendency. There's the one more guard. Lined up pretty well. Yeah. I, was, I was pretty sure she'd peel it on this one. It's, it's the last third stone that I'm not as sure about. placement there it looks like they're actually yeah I think they're being aggressive trying to double the two off the center line and they'll take the other one if they have to but uh, they'd like to get the two off center swings drifting a little bit just the straight peel again I think Amber's thinking the same thing I am. You throw one more guard, she's going to change gears. So, time to sit three.
looks like they're looking for a hit and roll here. Yeah, nose hit wouldn't be the end of the world here. You're, you're just looking to sit three. The only problem if you start grouping the rocks is Kieran's only still got three chances to to blast things out, and she could still go for a blank here. Okay, made the roll is made, and it just goes a piece under. They are sitting three. The straight back double looks so easy. The problem with it is if you make it, your shooter stays as a guard, she comes around it. So they're gonna look to drive it over the top, I think. They play the two on the center line, but looking to drive it over the top, which will roll the shooter out as well. Wants to make sure with this stone that uh, that center line area is open in case they need to draw for one. Not over girls on them. So that didn't hit anything that they were going no, for. In, interesting with that turn choice. It's the in turn here, but it was the out turn going the other way, and that has been the one that uh, seems like it was curling a little bit more on the hits. She certainly wasn't light on that. No, that's, that's not really where they were looking for at all. No. So that no. stays. No, she was trying to hit half a rock. And that got up just a little bit past the nose. Yeah, so now you're sitting good for Team Holland. One rock under cover, another one on the side. Yeah, I don't love... Talking about guarding shot rock, the problem with that is Alina Petz is going to play the run back, yellow onto the red, and try to make the red double. The guard's not going to take anything away. Yeah, it's one of those situations where you, you kind of like the way you're sitting, but when you realize you got to throw another rock and, and change it up. Everything they're talking about is, is to come in. I, I'd be tempted here to throw another guard on, on top of the yellow. Put the a guard in line with the yellow, which is in line to shot rock. It would take away her run back opportunity. You'd have three rocks in a row. You could still have this, this come around that they're talking about on the last one. The problem is if you, you play the come around here and if you're ever deep, Alina Pets is gonna follow you down and try to score two. Whereas if you play the draw on your last one, her following you down never gets her two. That's a very precise shot right now. Yeah. Now this does seem to be the, the side that will curl a little bit more. We saw Amber actually make a tap back, a double tap back. She had to move two stones coming around to guard. And got the finish to get her deuce in uh, end number four, so she's got to be comfortable in the spot. Still, you're trying to come around a rock in the top of the eight foot and you would like to stay in front of the T-line here. Yeah. So not a lot of tolerance for where this can go. Um, but Amber Holland herself, a former Briar champion, has Made her a number of clutch shots, so he's feeling it tonight, especially after that shot for two in the fourth. And chance here to put the pressure on. Scotty's chance, rather. I wasn't going to say anything, but I was thinking, you know, Amber's never actually won the Briar, being ineligible to compete. <laughs> Got a nice line coming in here. Comes to the top of the button, does have a, a little piece in behind. 
Nina Pets could make a play on it, but she won't be able to get behind cover. She's looking at the double, and I think part of her thinking, and she's not signaling it with the broom, is that if you do make the double, there's a chance you could spin up under the guard as well. Yeah, it wasn't exactly the call, but... Well, the other option for Lena Pets, she could play, make a play on shot rock and just roll over in behind what is currently second shot at the edge of the eight foot. He'd force Amber Holland to make a decision. Is she going to play the short run on her own stone or try to draw again for the steal? Could still play the run back as well. Boy, if he could ever stuff the run back yellow dead onto the red that's right behind it you would double off the one on the button now you wouldn't be shot rock but you'd be buried well this being a big shot the uh, whole team has been called down there's part of me wishing that at times like this this is when we need mics on the players and then i realize that i probably couldn't understand this team anyway <laughs> Need a translator on the line as well. Yeah. Need more than just microphones. Alina well, Petz's first thought was to play the double of the one on the side of the eight foot, come in towards Shot Rock, make the double that way, and there is a chance playing that you could spin up in behind the guard. I don't think they've ever looked at making a play directly on shot rock. There is the option you could just hit that rock and roll underneath the one that is currently second shot. It would leave a short run back, but uh, you wouldn't be able to get, Amber wouldn't be able to get anything buried on the button. Looks like they've opted for just the freeze. Freeze bump? Or do you just freeze now and, and knowing that you can come off that red stone on your last one and perhaps get two? Amber can't take both shots away with one guard. Yeah, that's, that's certainly a decision you want to make. Uh, you play in the freeze, you, you're thinking you, you got a, a one point lead. You, even if you give up a steal, and you maybe play for a blank in seven. Well, I think that's, that's why they settled on it. They know they've got the in off on that red stone. And if she guards the red stone, well, they're gonna end up with the shot that I was talking about. <laughs> needed more weight they just pushed yeah. it in behind the guard is all they've done kind of kind of halfway that makes the chip shot a little bit tougher so. well but if if amber can make the hit and roll on top of her own i don't see any way that uh, alina pet scores like that yellow just that little bit higher than the red she can hit fairly full with some weight roll over and just sit on the corner of that red stone, the edge of it under the guard, I don't see any way for Alina Pets to get it out. She'll have to make a similar shot to what she just threw to hold her to a steal of one. Sudden turn of events here. I mean, Team Holland has been sort of controlling this end, but they have a really yeah. good chance here to. She was always looking good for the force, but a chance here to to look really good for a steal, and, and it might not be just a steal of one either. Team Holland's last shot. Gonna get a piece of the yellow and go underneath. A little bit thin on the first one, so she moves her own stone out of the back button area. That does give Pets room to score. She could have hit that first one a little bit thicker and then just roll on top of the second one and not nudge it. That was an interesting turn choice also, based on where she was trying to hit that stone. Yes, and, and but it, you're looking for the flatter roll and, and coming over the top will tend to get the flatter roll. It does mean she was using the side that so far has appeared to curl a little bit more. and She did over curl that one just a little bit. The shot still has to be made though and uh, 
for Lena Pets. She overthrows this a little bit. May not make contact with that stone at all. She underthrows it, might not move it far enough, so there's still a chance for a steal of one. Delicate shot here for Lena Pets. Tim Holland counting four right now. There's never anything automatic when you're facing four. Brushes were on it early. Well, they've had to back away and, and it's just the one sweeper going looking for some curl here. She'll get down to it and nudge it, but doesn't catch enough of it. Pretty much the same result as her first one. So after being down 4-1, Team Holland steals a point, knots the game up at four as we go into the seventh end. As you can see, there's a few of them. There's roughly 20 logos per sheet to be put in for the mixed doubles, along with a couple of extra little dots. But all our logos come from Jet Ice. They are the best logos to put in. We use them around the world, and they're very easy to install. As you can tell, this is the center ice logo that's going to be going in for the world. This is about a four footer by 10. It's going to look like a million dollars. Their colors on their logos are always nice and vibrant. And like I said before, very easy to put in. We're back here in the Seventh end of the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown on Curling Stadium. I'm Matt Sussman and Sean Joyce is alongside me here. As Sean, we saw a sixth end that was a uh, was all red all the time and um, looked like they were forcing, but as it turns out, a tough little shot to score turned out to be a steal. Yeah, and this is a, an end where, well, we talked a little bit about the statistics last end, uh, one down playing six. Your your stats, your win probability goes way up for Team Holland after picking up that steal. You're now tied up playing seven. I think it's something that I'd have to get Jerry to, to check the stats for, but I think it's now closer to about 60-40. For Amber Holland, she wants to see a single point go up on the board here. She doesn't really particularly care who scores it. Turns only wants either a deuce or a blank. So yet again, all the play going into the middle. This is a B event game, so both teams are still alive no matter what happens. The winner of this game will go on to play Team Kaiser of Switzerland tomorrow afternoon. The loser of the game We'll drop down to the last chance C event at 9 a.m. against uh, Team Penny Barker. Oh, 9 a.m., that makes it sound even worse. That's the beauty of a triple knockout. You're not only playing Stay Alive, but you're playing for a better time. <laughs> well, it, nothing to say that there's anything wrong with 9 a.m., but uh, when you've got the 8.30 draw the night before, oh yeah, 9 a.m. comes quick. looking to make a play on the rock in the rings ends up getting the tick on the guard which is probably just as good or better. 
Hard to do with that decision rate. time for Amber Hall, and she doesn't want a blank end here, so probably going to start throwing guards. Doesn't want to give them the opportunity to bring all the play into the rings. always the problem when you don't have last rock in an end like this is you want to force but you want to be careful not to force them to two or three yeah I mean the, the, the stats speak for themselves it does say a lot in terms of you know, what position you want to be in but you know like we've also seen in this game and in many other games there is no guaranteed win when you're you've got hammer in the last end it's, it's what you want but there, there are opportunities for both teams to, to score and win in that situation um, but yeah it, so far so good is the sixth rock of the end, so they're able to remove that guard now. They were making the play on shot stone, just playing with quieter weight so they could get the finish, but it uh, doesn't matter that they killed it. Kendall being asked to replace the guard. I'd say she did quite well on that. Yeah, I don't think they're even going to entertain the notion of making a play on Shot Rock right now. Talked about it last end. Sometimes it comes down to a question of timing. When do you want to make your play in the house? It's going to be the same thing here. I have to expect Amber Holland's going to throw at least one more guard, and I wouldn't be surprised to see her throw two. point I think the force she is she might throw is, three. Yeah. With the force play being probably a hit and roll. Except for yeah. everything in the house. Yeah. Problem is it's it's tough to make hit and roll off that without leaving a double. So you you make that play too early and it gives uh Tiern's only too many chances to make the double and set up the blank. The nice thing about it where you've got your stone at the top of the eight foot, it's really hard for Tiranzoni to switch gears. Now this has slid a little tight. You might've given her a chance to play for the double. I think with that much ice, it looks like she's just gonna straight peel the guard. Yeah, we're taking a look at that yellow on the side. You might get the little bonus here if you there you go. Have your shooter come into that stone, sit right there, and, and hang on for a biter. That would uh, mm, bring three yeah. into play. It's funny how those little stones that just look like they're not going to matter creep back into play. this. 
takes the hit that's going to be a little too thick to roll into her own stone. Well, we're down to third's last stones again, and Amber wondering what to do. And I, she's never going to ask me, <laughs> but I think you throw the guard again. The difference this end versus the last end is it's tough for Sylvana Tiranzoni to switch gears on you. Where does she go? To set up a deuce if she wants to, to switch gears from trying to the blank for trying to the deuce as long as you're guarding that stone that's just nibbling the top of the forefoot it's really tough yes Taryn's only sitting one now and she might have a chance to sit two but uh, she's probably gonna have to leave a double or at least a hit and roll under so I think if you make the guard she's probably peeling it one more time It's been really interesting watching this game, seeing the momentum shift after Amber did make that little tough bump for two. This was looking like an all two and zoni game, and you certainly feel that one team is suddenly playing more confident than the other based in how they've been making their shots and selecting their shots. Guard is made. I'm going to play that same type of shot that peel the guard, roll over, try to maybe bump their own stone into the rings. This is certainly the type of shot that, you know, a team ranked fifth in the world sees and expects to make. Well, they're on the brush right away. Does have to stay fairly thin on this first one if she's going to make contact with the second. Going to be a little thick again, goes over the top. So Amber's decision here is, do you throw one more guard, knowing that Tiranzoni is going to have to make an aggressive play if she's going to have to score two, but what would that play be? Or do you play the hit on the stone in the rings and try to find a way, a way to roll and not leave a double? That's the problem. You leave a double and this could be a blank. down to skip stones here that is the ultimate decision is and it looks like yeah. she is going to play on shot stone and try to separate these as much as she can and there's nothing wrong with this call a lot of players would play this call but I'm looking at this ice conditions and the and the the position of that stone at the top of the forefoot and I might be tempted to guard it here because where does Alina Pets go if she straight peels the guard and you play this shot on your last one, then she's forced. So she can't peel the guard if you throw it one more time. She's going to have to make a play in the house. I don't know what she can do that, that she's not going to leave you something. And the hit was made and it rolls over. And... He's put some two, distance between those two rocks, so it's never a gimme double when there's five feet between them. Yeah, absolutely. This is still got to be made, and even if it's made, it probably sticks over there. So yeah, it, it stays forces. over there. You still got the chance to maybe hit and roll under those corners and, and get the force that way. The pets is first, going for the double. I was just wondering, I'm looking at the weight. I think this is an attempt at the double all the way. The other option is she could have tried to hit and roll right onto the corner of it. There's one, and there's two, and 
taken a shot by Elena Boy, Pets. Almost spun up to get a piece of that undercover. It did. But it is good that it did spin, and it doesn't look like there's really a lot of space to roll either. There's probably room, but you've got to flirt with touching that stone outside the rings if you're going to really go after the roll. Yeah, and you could roll probably half, but then that just leaves a blank opportunity all the same. If you're half buried, does she play for the blank? She can concede the one as well. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm wondering. There are some teams that would, if you give them the choice, they're going to want last rock in the extra end, or pardon me, last rock in, in coming home. So you know, she'll take the blank because she's going to have yeah. last rock. But if she's got a choice between who's scoring one, she might just give it away. Doesn't yeah, have to make that choice. She's got the chance for the blank. Absolutely. The cat and mouse game. The uh, big double thrown by Alina Pets gets him out of trouble and blank opportunity here. Well, and that yeah. was always the issue with with playing that stone in the rings, and it's one of the reasons why you saw Amber wait till her first stone to do it. You didn't want to give her too many chances to make the double. As it turns out, she only needed one. Makes the hit here and does roll out. We've got a blank end. Yeah, no problem there. We will go to the eighth end with Team Terenzoni having the hammer in a 4-4 game. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Back here on the eighth end, the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown on Curling Stadium in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. I'm Matt Sussman, and Sean Joyce has been joining me for this B event match between Team Tiranzoni and Team Amber Holland. As Tiranzoni holds on to the hammer after a sort of careful seventh end, looking to Keep the eighth end as wide open as possible, and that is going to happen with a wonderful, wonderful That is a shot. nice way to start. We did see the, the first guard was thrown a little bit higher, and you have to think uh, that was on purpose, the Holland team thinking, well, if we can get one and they miss the tick shot, we're going to throw a second guard. But they couldn't get the first miss. Look to put the guard back and see if she can do it again. Yeah. 
trying to come in a little tighter on this one because you know that uh, you're only going to have one guard to work with. Discussion about this tick shot in, in the game in terms of where it can and cannot be used. It can be used in these cash bills. Second one is made. Not as pretty as the first, but I don't think any tick shot was as pretty as that first one. Let's leave a number of rocks around that uh, something might get jammed off of. You're going to try to put this guard up in a spot where there might be angles to jam on either side. Yeah, that's the one thing about the tick. There's always a lot of clutter, so it's never never a given thing. And one rock just needs to go the wrong way, just a sliver and have a fortunate or unfortunate bounce. Five rock rule. Left the double on the reds as difficult as they could. It's fairly thin on the first one. Zuni believes it's Less worth a go. Half. is going to leave a center guard just off center. What they wanted. Game on. Carly Kendall with her uh, final stone here in the eighth end needs to make a good come around. This might be the rock they have to try to steal with. Make a good one here. You expect that Tiranzoni is going to peel the guards and, and you'll be guarding this one for the rest of the end. Absolutely. This one is going to get into the eight foot. A little bit deeper, but... Yeah, they would have loved it a little bit deeper. It's it's not a rock. It's still partially exposed, but it's not a rock that uh, Tiranzoni's going to worry about. He'll guard it for now if she misses the run. But it's it's the kind of stone where it sits, where you're going to have to make a decision, probably with your last one. Do we tap that up? Because it, it may not be good enough to steal where it is. Yeah, it's a little bit in the way in terms of uh, possibly the clockwise turn on the left, but for now, can't worry about it. Just need to guard it. Yeah, for now you're guarding. You know that Tiranzoni is going to be peeling. It is right on the center line. I, I don't think you make a play on it until your last stone. Still means three guards have to be made and three peels have to follow them. This stone has some, some digging to do. It's sliding a little deep. Well, that's left an opportunity to make the double. 
Yeah, it has. It's it's deep and it's not really guarding it either. Yeah, but I think the guard's a bigger concern than the rock in the eight foot. The only thing you... is, your shooter is probably coming into the side of that other red stone, and if you don't squirt back, which is what they're talking about, you're going to protect a little bit of forefoot. If you think back to, you know, where that stone is, it's not an ideal steel rock. Would you ever just straight peel this the other way? You could. Well, and, and I wonder here if she's worried about making the double in the house or maybe more worried about making the double peel here. This might be catch the first one a little bit thinner, get the back end of that rock and make sure you squirt into the house. Uh, because the one thing about that, that corner guard, the red corner guard, is it is kind of taking away your in-turn path to draw to the forefoot if you needed that for your last one. You do still have the out-turn right now. It'd be nice to have both sides open. Turn Zoni's first, looking to clear a little bit of the front, and she does. She clears both guards and does, like you said, squirt into the house. Half biting. Good result. Yeah, it's, it's the kind of shot that might mean you don't have to stay with your last one. Other than that, it doesn't help you a lot. The, the draw path is still blocked. And that stone half in the 12 foot could still be used as a guard if it had to be, so. At least it's your own stone. Yes. And you're always better to see. Boy, she hits that first one just a sliver thinner. Catches the back end a little bit more and that. She might have spun in for shot rock. garden looks a little bit better it's a little bit further away it's got a piece of the center line as well but yellow not helping them where it stopped in the 12 foot so they're gonna peel towards it see if they can't clip it out the top of the rings as well and once again don't, yeah don't think you could ever clip it in a way that you'd slice it back towards the one in the middle. That'd be that'd be pretty greedy if you could make that. <laughs> Just makes the peel over the top. After all that, we are down to skip rocks. Should throw one more guard. You may see uh, Pets and Tiranzoni have a little discussion after this guard is made, though. You peel it one more time, you know that Amber Holland's going to come down, tap that stone up into the button area. He'll be facing two with the last one. So would you ever switch gears and, and play an offensive shot here? Switching gears is always more fun for the viewers, I always say. Well, whether they do it or not, it's always fun to discuss the options when uh, when you're the commentators. And it absolutely is. If we know what's going to happen, it just, well, I guess one way is it makes us think like it's smart. Well, and the thing about it is that yellow stone that they moved into the 12 foot has taken away one side already. So if you play the, the peel, knowing that she's going to play the tap up, your choice is probably going to be the double. Only looking at their options here. Yeah, that seems to be discussing the tap. The other option is you it's thin. You could play the slash yellow onto the to the red at the top of the eight foot, and even if you just spill them both, now you've got both turns available for your last stone. Okay. 
Amber Holland will try to draw one around that center guard, but uh, we have seen a couple of times already in this game, you can come around a guard like that and, and tap a stone back. In the end, I don't think she loved any of the options, so she's going to play the peel one more time. Still would love to clip that Yellowstone out of the 12 foot just to make sure she's got both turns available with her last one. Now, if Amber makes the perfect tap back to the button area, she's going to have to play the double. But you'd like the option to draw if she leaves you room. Serena Petz's first shot, looking for a peel. Maybe clear up some debris. She'll just get the single peel. It's time to make that shot stone a little bit better. Yeah, your choices are you either tap it up, or you could try to draw around the yellow and leave that, that stone at the top of the 8-foot where it is just because it kind of is in the way for the draw. Getting around the yellow is no uh, gimme, though. That's probably the ideal shot. It's just the hardest one if you were to draw right to where her broom is. Yeah, I mean, she's going to have the outturn draw, wide outturn draw to the sliver edge of the button. Um, but maybe that's the shot you want her to play. You play the tap back, you're leaving a pretty much a straight back double for one of the best hitters in the women's game. Yeah. Taps are always tough to get the angles the way you want it's them to. tough to get it perfect too, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it just comes down to really a feel for what you want to throw, what you want your opponent to throw. With the broom, I'm thinking she might be going for the draw. Yeah, I think that was what all the discussion was about. Not much of a port there, but there is one there. So Amber Holland looking for T-line weights. You know, the interesting thing about this, if you were if you were content to make her draw anyway. You could just throw the guard again. She's only got the outturn draw available as it is. And if you miss that guard, you, you show a piece. She can pick oh, it up. Oh, for and sure. Win. Yep. Yep. But if you don't make this port, True. she's going to have a fairly easy shot for the win. And, and uh, the guard, you've just thrown the guard four times in a row. That looks a little easier to me than the port. The port can certainly, if you make the draw, it certainly makes her shot a lot tougher. Yep. But this is a tough shot for you, too. Under Holland looking for really good draw here. Weight's close. The question is going to be, she's not going to get off her own. They're, they're switching plans here to try to tap it back. Hmm. And they tap it back, but on a bit of an angle, so it stays out in the open. And a wide open. Piranzoni looks like she can hit and afford to roll maybe about two feet. So after all that, just like you said, to your point, a high reward shot didn't pan out and made a pets with an open hit and stick for the win. Pressure's just cleaning it. This has been a bit of a straighter side for the hits. You shouldn't expect this one to take off. That is right on the nose. So, Team Terenzoni, after a bit of a second half struggles, will hold on to win this match five to four. They will continue on the B side. Amber Holland's team will set the alarm clocks and get up and play in the C events at 9 a.m. Uh, Sean, any final thoughts here? You know, it was, it was a great game. Uh, Alina Petz is, is firing on all cylinders. I'm not sure how they lost a game to drop to the B. She's hitting everything right now, and uh, uh, that certainly bodes well for them moving forward in the event. It'll be interesting to see the Swiss teams play against each other tomorrow. Absolutely, and you can watch any of those games 
here on uh, Curling Zone, Curling Stadium, uh, all weekend. So uh, thanks to all of you for joining us. Thanks for spending your Friday evening with us, and we look forward to having you watch some more games here in the uh, RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. I'm Matt Sussman with Sean Joyce. Thanks for watching.